Welcome back to the Navy Sports Magazine, presented by the Navy Federal Credit Union. Time now to shine the light on women's track and field with Katie Halbert, the senior from Keller, Texas. Anytime you participate in athletics in the state of Texas, we know it always means a little bit more, seemingly. Uh, for you, growing up in that kind of competitive environment, how much did that springboard you to being a Division One athlete and, and have found uh, quite a bit of success here uh, at the Naval Academy? Actually, this is it's definitely an interesting environment to grow up in. You know, start young, got put in soccer when I was like three years old, played that <laughs> nonstop. And when I stopped playing that, my mom was like, well, you got to pick one sport. So she dragged me against my will to volleyball, found out I loved that sport. And then when it came to middle school, they're like, do as much as you can. So I picked up cheerleading, picked up track. Um, and my older sister ran hurdles. And so instead of running the relays, I was like, can I try hurdles? And absolutely fell in love with it. Started off and there is a lot of good competition in Dallas, Texas. So um, all those meets in high school, the invitationals, Texas relays, it really like got me a feeling for the way the competition is going to work. As you look to expand, uh, obviously beyond high school, was it always going to be track and field or, you know, did volleyball stand a chance uh, as you were looking uh, to expand to the college level? I wasn't originally going to do any sports in college because of the schools that I wanted to attend for um, academics until I got recruited by Navy. And then I was like, what is this place? Never heard of the United States Naval Academy. And I looked it up and my dad and I Googled it and I applied for summer seminar, absolutely fell in, lo fell in love. And I was like, I couldn't imagine not doing it. I was like, well, there's also the opportunity to run track. Maybe I'll try that. And so um, volleyball was never going to be my college sport, even though I really loved it. Track was kind of where I had the most interest and the most offers. So when the Naval Academy reached out, I was like, I couldn't imagine not going to the school. And then I was like, this is a great opportunity to pursue track on, on that side as well. So when you when you started to research the Naval Academy, what got you so excited about it? As you said, the more you, you know, kind of looked at it, you're like, hey, th this really can be something I can excel in. Believe it or not, it was the YouTube videos. They got me. I was like, this is so interesting, <laughs> so different. I had never heard of anything like it. I, it appealed to me in that it wasn't going to be the same structure that everyone else followed. I was like, I didn't necessarily want a nine to five, nine to five job. I couldn't imagine having a career that was something that I loved. I was like, my job was always going to be separate. And now I'm on track to try to be a Navy pilot. And I'm like, I can't imagine not loving that career. So all those opportunities, the different decisions you can make when you were here just seemed incredible. And not something you would necessarily get in another college. How different has the experience been than what you thought it might have been going into it? Um, well, I definitely had an eye-opening experience with Plebe Summer. I thought I was mentally tough and like prepared because everyone was always like, oh, you're such a leader. I learned the hard way. I was like, everybody here is an exceptional leader and you're not as mentally tough as you think you are. Um, so I've matured a lot and grown a lot and kind of gotten a better perspective on myself as I've kind of worked my way up into being a leader that I think could actually serve the Navy well and lead sailors and Marines. Um, but it was definitely unexpected. And I went through a lot of struggles and aptitude issues, things where I was like, is this where I'm supposed to be? And I kind of fought through it and I can't imagine myself anywhere else. What helped you fight through those things? Because you're not alone in that. I mean, thousands of, of young men and women who have come to this institution have had the same mental things happen to them uh, that, that you experienced. But what helped you get through those tough times to where now you're just a, a few months away from walking across that stage? I found myself here starting with track and field. Uh, Clayton Thompson, uh, last year's track captain, became one of my best friends almost immediately. Um, his energy and spirit, just every single day at track practice, it became the center of my life. I couldn't wait to go to track, couldn't wait to get to practice. Um, it brought like a new level of like joy. And then I moved in with my roommate who lives right behind me and I met my best friend. Um, and I couldn't imagine, so my support system was incredible. My family is incredibly supportive, even if they can't get up here very often. Um, and between my two best friends, it was, they never let me fail. They were always there to support me, even when it was tough um, to keep me pushing. It's cliche, but it's always the people, the people you do it with. Yeah, no doubt about it. You mentioned when you were talking with our Phil Bergman about just the fact that, you know, when the lacrosse team shows up to support you guys, 
is it really kind of because there's only 4,400 people there at the academy. It's a real small exclusive group. But when a team or even other students there at the academy show up to, to bring you that support, how much does that energy help? Because, you know, they share in that same grind that you all go through each and every day. It is awesome to have support from other athletes. It's, it's a small small school but especially with indoor track and field it's an enclosed space it doesn't take that many people to fill it with energy and like to inspire athletes to push as hard as they can um you can't always hear them when you're racing but when you're cheering on your teammates having that energy like you cheer louder when the person next to you is screaming their head off as well um and our captain of captains is really big on encouraging us to like get our teams to other sporting events um and he leads by example he goes to as many as he can he's like I've been to volleyball games basketball games sprint football football um even squash games and I try to do my best to get to as many of those as possible but having the men's lacrosse team there even if like they came back from practice and they spent an hour just cheering us on made a huge difference especially on like in a Friday afternoon in an empty West B um made a big difference for me at least yeah what what is it about that facility and every time I talk to our track athletes the fact that you have a world-class indoor facility to compete in, what does that mean? And how much does that even just that a little bit more help you uh, as a competitor uh, try to achieve your goals each and every time you compete? It's an incredible facility. There's something about being able to practice in the same environment. You're going to be competing at a high level. Um, and I don't know, even like just, the difference between I say Army's track and our track is they have a flat track and it's completely enclosed. There's not a window in sight. We have a beautiful <laughs> Olympic track with Mondo surface that's you know elevated, but there's an entire wall of windows. You can watch the sunset every day while you're practicing. Um, the environment just is so different and it makes you want to be there more often. It's easy to spend time. And then when you're competing and you're used to that, you're like, it's not intimidating to run at a really nice facility. Um, like Boston or Liberty, like they're really nice, but you're used to it and you're used to performing on those surfaces and like getting your fast times out. As an athlete, when you do your best and you get PRs, how do you maintain the challenge of trying to do that again the next time? Because uh, as we talk with individual track athletes all the time, you can do your best, but another athlete might do their best that day. It might be good enough for them to win a competition. How do you wrestle with making sure that you're trying to peak, you know, as you get ready to set to compete on Saturday? So I like to leave the previous week's performances in the previous week, good or bad. You can't let that control how you're going to perform the next week. So if I held myself to the same standards, what I let, ran say two weeks ago, it would be very different. So you go into practice the next Monday after competition and you're resetting. It's a completely new um, what's it called? Completely new blank space, and you're going to start from scratch. So I go into practice and we hurdle, and I'm fighting against the two girls on my other side just for practice to compete for wins in practice. And that sets the tone for the competition on Saturday. Um, so you have a whole five day buildup that can determine how you compete on Saturday. You get one day to bask in that, process that, good or bad, and then you reset and you do it again. The fact that when you see that, that, that flag, all those flags with the stars uh, there on the yard. How hungry are you guys to add another one uh, to that uh, display coming up this weekend? I very much so want to add another one. I'm wearing my sweater now and there's only four stars on it because we lost one to Army and we lost one to COVID and I am determined to never lose another one. Katie, appreciate you taking so much time for us. Best of luck to you and your teammates coming up uh, this weekend. Best of health the rest of the way. Thank you. Beat Army.